Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. Now, you ran one of the most effective campaigns you know, as, a governorship candidate, as the governorship candidate of APC in River State. I remember reading your manifesto there, you know, titled the Better Together. What exactly went wrong? Well, if you ask me, um, what went wrong is our electoral system. There was nothing wrong mm. with our campaign. We ran the most effective campaign. Rivers people accepted our message, but Rivers people were not given opportunity to cast their vote. The electoral mm. process was marred by violence. It is the first and only election in Nigeria where we lost 1,000 souls. It has never happened before. Nothing wow. like has ever happened before. And we are documenting it in a book called The Heart of the Brave, which we hope to we'll present next year. Yeah, that book will be presented next year among three books we plan to present next year. We're going to present, oh well, by first quarter 2022, we are presenting three books by the special grace of God. You know, we're presenting wow. three books. Um, is one of the three books we'll be presenting. Um, so, um, what went wrong is our electoral system, or was rather, our electoral system. There was nothing wrong with mm. the campaign. We ran an effective campaign, a message uh, that reverse people accepted and supported. They looked forward to a time that they will have a governor who represents their aspiration, a governor who will do their wishes, or who will accomplish those things that are dear to them. And they believe that will represent that will represent that vision, that dream, will represent it, um, their hopes and aspiration. But of course, the electoral process dashed that. It was marked by violence, and they got a governor they didn't deserve. A governor they didn't elect. A governor they didn't vote. But that's history now. All, all, all right. Now, still talking about that election, what would you have done differently if people had? elected you compared to what is currently on ground. You know, two persons are the same. I would have done several things differently. Mm. In a manifesto which we call Roadmap to Prosperity, we outlined what we could have done if given the opportunity to serve as governor. And we encoded on three things. Step one is security, law, and order. No society can prosper if there is no law and order. If the people are not safe and secure, and they don't feel safe and secure. No society can prosper. Now, in an atmosphere of insecurity, you cannot talk about economic prosperity. You cannot talk about mm. economic growth. When the people feel insecure, not only are they insecure, when they feel insecure, productivity will come to all-time low. When productivity comes to all-time low, there will be no employment, because there are no economic activities. In, a, in an atmosphere of insecurity, there will be no economic activity. People won't go to farm. They will feel insecure to go to farm. There will be no production. And when there's no production, of course, you know that poverty will visit the people like, like, um, like a feast. And when the people are poor, of course, you know, it affects the quality of living and it affects the next generation. They can't send their, their children to school. That's what happens when there's poverty. They can't get the best of health care. They can't get the best of nutrition. Yeah. It's that not what happens when there's poverty. And so, we have, said, we have said the first thing we will address is the issue of security. Security. And the, second one. the second one is to create the environment for investment to flow into reverse Create the right environment. Mm. And creating the right environment means that we we'll put the right infrastructure in place. We will address social infrastructure. And when we say address social infrastructure, one is address the issue of education. You build capacity of the people. If you to live a productive life, when you invest in education, whether in primary, secondary, and tertiary education, what you're doing is that you're enhancing the capacity of the people to live a productive life. And it affects the generation that will come after them. Now, when they have knowledge, when they have skill, they become employable. Now, they are, they are not going to become um, open to be used for um, crime and all of those stuff. They will live a well-guided and productive life. So we invest in social infrastructure of education, we invest in social infrastructure of healthcare. We invest in social infrastructure of, you know, the, the platforms that will provide them opportunity to embark on meaningful economic activity. So the second thing we have said, we said create a right environment for in, 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 investment to come in and thrive. 
Now, the other thing, aside from that environment, that environment includes the fact that you build infrastructure. Now, you make the judiciary function. Now, the fact that you know, if you talk about line title, people should be to have access to line title. With line title, they cannot take loan. They can do businesses. Now, invest in power infrastructure. We have a clear plan on how to give River State 24 hours, 7 days power supply. There's no part of River State that lights will have blinked. It's simple. We are in that with gas everywhere. Everywhere in River State. There's no single community where there's no gas. And we would have done a mixture of things to provide them electricity. You know, small power plants powered by gas. Now, of course, mixture of different sources of energy and we deploy it. And we're almost going to achieve that. So that's the second thing. Uh, How about the third one? The third, the, one third one. Is, the third one is intervention itself in productive activities. We want to target sectors. The target sector of agriculture because agriculture has capacity to create a lot of employment. And so what what wanted to do was a transition from sustenance farming to mechanized farming, whether in the area of aquaculture or the area of um, uh, farming, mechanized farming itself. In agriculture, we wanted to target agriculture, we wanted to target ICT, we wanted to build ICT park. And first, the three major senatorial districts, three senatorial districts of the state, we wanted to build ICT park that can take at the first phase, 1,000 young people living at the ICT park, owning offices at the ICT park, doing their business. If for nothing else, River State will have been the hub of ICT servicing the whole of this country. We had a clear vision of those who wanted to partner with, they get the right partnership, get the right funding, build those ICT parks. Now, at first instance, put 1,000 persons in the ICT park. They visit that office, they got the right skill, they have all infrastructure. The ICT infrastructure mm -hmm. to drive it. After which they will move out, set up their own. You bring another one. There. So, in the first four years, now you train three thousand young people. So, in the first year, first year, second year, three thousand. So, in the first four years, you are training twelve thousand young people. Oh, so to their own businesses. Wow. Our idea is that each person who goes through the I ICT park <laughs> will be able to employ ten other persons. So we're talking about 120,000 young people working in that sector, supported by yeah. the state government to set up and create employment for people. So that's yeah. what we wanted to target one. The third one wanted to target one was the creative industry of football, filmmaking, and all of that. Those create the creative industry, the creative, not the mm. industry. That's the other thing we wanted to focus on.